Europe's first energy island is already in trouble. Belgium is building this artificial island in the North Sea, designed to send massive wind power across Europe. But with costs skyrocketing from 2.5 to 8 billion euros, the future of Princess Elizabeth Island is in doubt. So today we're diving into why this island even exists, how it's being built, and why Europe's offshore wind dream might collapse before it even begins. Just 45 kilometers off Belgium's coast, the construction of this man-made island is underway. This project is unlike anything Europe has attempted before. No one will live on it, only inspection robots. Its mission, to gather electricity from offshore wind farms and channel it across Europe. If it succeeds, it could become the starting point for a continent-wide energy revolution. But before that, let's rewind a little and think why does Belgium even need an island? Why does Belgium, this small country better known for waffles and chocolate, need its very own artificial energy island? Well, surprisingly, Belgium is already a heavyweight in offshore wind. They've got eight operational wind farms out in the North Sea, and for such a small country, they actually rank seventh in the entire world for offshore wind capacity. Not bad for a nation that you can practically drive across in a few hours. But here's where it gets bigger. Back in 2016, Belgium teamed up with eight other North Sea countries in a bold pact to develop offshore wind energy together. The idea was to turn the North Sea into a kind of giant plug socket, an interconnected grid where countries could build wind farms, share electricity, and balance each other out. Imagine it like a massive group project where, for once, everyone actually does their part. And even countries without coastlines want it in. Landlocked Luxembourg, the one with zero access to the sea, signed up to buy energy from this grid. That's like showing up to a barbecue with no grill and no burgers, but still getting to eat. It all ties back to Europe's big climate goals. Remember the Paris Agreement in 2015? Yeah, Europe promised to cut emissions in a big way. Wind power was always supposed to be a key part of that plan, but the urgency skyrocketed in 2022 when Russia invaded Ukraine. Suddenly, Europe realized just how dependent it had been on Russian natural gas. That gas supply got slashed, prices went through the roof, and the continent had to scramble to find alternatives. Cue the wind turbines. By 2023, leaders at the North Sea Summit weren't just talking about adding a few extra turbines, they were talking about quadrupling offshore wind capacity by 2030 and then increasing it tenfold by 2050. We're talking thousands of turbines and an energy grid so powerful it could cover most of the continent's electricity needs. It's a vision of independence, clean energy, homegrown in Europe, no strings attached to Russia. But for that kind of dream to work, you need hubs. And those hubs need to be offshore. Enter the islands. Belgium's Princess Elizabeth Energy Island is designed to be the nerve center for three brand new offshore wind farms in what's called the Princess Elizabeth Zone. We're talking hundreds of turbines pumping out 3.5 gigawatts of power. That's enough to cover millions of homes. And instead of running a separate cable from each wind farm back to the mainland, all that electricity will first flow into the island, then travel back to shore as one clean, efficient stream. But here's the really clever part. The island isn't just a big junction box for Belgium. It's being built to handle both AC and DC power. Now, quick refresher. AC, or alternating current, is what powers your home. It's great for short distances, like your neighborhood power grid. DC, or direct current, is way better for long distance transmission because it loses less energy along the way. And since this island isn't just sending energy back to Belgium, but also connecting to other countries, DC is essential. Think of it like this. AC is your local pizza delivery guy. He's great if you just live down the street. But if you're trying to get that pizza delivered from another city, you'd rather have FedEx. That's DC, and the Princess Elizabeth Energy Island 
will basically be both a pizza shop and a FedEx hub, rooting energy across Europe. Belgium's former Prime Minister summed it up perfectly when he said the North Sea is becoming the powerhouse of Europe's energy independence. By 2050, the plan is for the North Sea to generate 300 gigawatts of power. That's enough to supply 300 million homes, more homes than even exist in Europe. That's how massive this vision is. Now, of course, none of this is possible without some serious construction. And here's where it gets wild. Belgium doesn't actually have any natural islands in the North Sea, so they had to build one from scratch. How do you even do that? It starts with these gigantic concrete monsters called caissons. Picture concrete Lego blocks, except each one is 58 meters long, up to 32 meters tall, and weighs a jaw-dropping 22,000 tons. That's not a typo. 22,000 tons. Each caisson takes three months to build, with crews working around the clock pouring special sulfate-resistant cement designed to survive the salty North Sea. Once one of these beasts is done, it gets towed out into the sea with four tugboats, sunk into place with sand and water, and reinforced with rubble. A total of 23 caissons will eventually lock together like a ring, forming the perimeter of the island. Inside that ring? Sand. Millions of cubic meters of sand. Three million, to be exact. That sand gets compacted using a method called vibroflotation, which basically involves sticking a giant probe into the sand, blasting water sideways, and shaking it until the sand particles lock tightly together. It's like giving the seabed an industrial massage until it's rock solid. Once the sand is all packed in, the engineers will cap the surface with concrete, turning it into a stable platform. The final product will be about six hectares, roughly the size of a dozen football fields, and this isn't just some bare slab of concrete. The island will have a harbor, a helipad, and yes, robot dogs. These robot dogs will patrol the site when workers aren't around, inspecting equipment and sending video feeds back to the mainland. If you've seen those Boston Dynamics robot dogs walking around construction sites, that's the kind of thing we're talking about. So if you've ever wanted to imagine a post-apocalyptic island run by machines, Belgium's already building it. But here's where things get a little complicated. Whenever you drop a man-made island in the middle of the ocean, you can bet there are going to be environmental concerns. The developers know this, so they're trying something they call nature-inclusive design. Instead of just plopping a slab of concrete into the sea, they're building features that can actually help marine life. For example, the seawalls will include ledges specifically designed to attract black-legged kittiwakes, a kind of seagull. They're also building artificial reefs with rough surfaces for shellfish and oyster beds to kickstart ecosystems. The idea is that these new habitats could support marine biodiversity while also protecting the island's structure from erosion. It's a win-win, or at least that's what the developers claim. Environmental groups remain skeptical pointing out that no one really knows the long-term impact this will have on the North Sea's delicate ecosystems. But the bigger problem right now isn't the environment, it's the money. And this is where the entire dream of the Princess Elizabeth Island, and maybe even the North Sea energy grid itself, starts to wobble. When the project was first announced, the price tag was around 2.5 billion euros. Still massive, but doable for a project of this scale. But thanks to inflation, rising construction costs, and most importantly, a global shortage of DC electrical equipment, that cost has ballooned to over 8 billion euros. And it's not just Belgium. Every country building offshore wind projects is competing for the same limited supply of specialized DC gear, and the prices are going through the roof. This freaked out the people who actually have to buy the electricity. In January, a group of major energy consumers called for a stop to construction, arguing that the DC side of the project had become too expensive to make sense. By June 2025, the inevitable happened. The developers officially canceled the DC component. Now, here's why that's a disaster. Without DC, the island can still collect power from Belgium's wind farms and send it back to the mainland. But it loses its ability to connect efficiently with other countries. 
That whole dream of the North Sea as one big shared energy grid? Suddenly, that's looking a lot less likely. Originally, Belgium hoped the island would be fully online by 2030. Later, that slipped to 2032, but now, nobody knows. The caissons are being built, the sand is being poured, the island itself will exist, but without the high-tech electrical backbone, it could just end up being a very expensive piece of concrete with some robot dogs running around, and Belgium isn't alone. Denmark, another pioneer in offshore wind, recently postponed its own energy island until at least 2036. Earlier this year, they even scrapped their financing plan for wind energy and announced they were going back to the drawing board. So where does that leave the future of North Sea Wind? Honestly, it's up in the air. The potential is enormous. The idea of generating 300 gigawatts of clean power, enough to supply 300 million homes, is world-changing. But the costs, the logistics, and the politics are threatening to sink it before it gets there. So now, I've got to throw it to you. What do you think? Will Europe actually pull this off? Will Belgium's Princess Elizabeth Island become a cornerstone of a renewable energy revolution? Or is it destined to be remembered as one of those grand futuristic projects that looked amazing on paper but never really worked in practice? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you've stuck with me this far, hit that like button to show some love. Subscribe if you want more deep dives into mega projects like this, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss the next one. Because whether this energy island turns into Europe's biggest climate win or just a very expensive sandcastle, one thing's for sure, the story of the North Sea is far from over.